Awesome. We're going to jump into the Word of God straight into it. Now, I, I'm sure you can relate when I say, do you sometimes feel like life is a bit non-stop? Like it is go, go, go. Like all the dads out there, just relate with me for a second here. You know, it feels like we've got these countless plates. We've got to keep spinning in our, in our lives. You know, at work, it's like there's one deadline or project to another. And, and we've got to keep the family happy as well. We've got to keep the yard looking decent. And, and we could keep keeping the family happy. And, and we've got to get the family to church, not to mention serving somewhere and, and maintaining our own personal relationship with Jesus and Sorting out that argument you had with your spouse on the way to church, it's always on the way to church, isn't it? Those arguments, right? And um, helping your kids to grow in their relationship with God, or at least just not kill their brother or sister, uh, and get them to do their homework, to put their dirty clothes away, you know. Plus, we've got to be a, a light to our neighbors and our colleagues, share the gospel when we can. Um, and they say, they say it's really important that we fit in some downtime. You know, we've got to have that downtime, um, uh, and we've got to have friendships, catch up with mates, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm meant to have a hobby, apparently. I need to stay up to date with what's going on in the world. i got to stay in shape. That one's really dropped to the bottom of the list. Um, maybe maintain some sense of style, or some of us have just already given up. Um, we got to keep the beard well-groomed, or some of you are just trying to grow a beard. Um, uh, not pointing at any specific ethnicity or anything like that. Um, plus, you got to keep up with the Netflix series that your wife wants you to watch with her, and... Jeez, I, it's a lot of things. I feel exhausted just listing off all this stuff. And uh, this busyness of life and, and trying to be a fruitful follower of Jesus can just sometimes feel nonstop. Like it can feel exhausting and, and stressful and, and, and just draining, right? And that's not just for the dads, but I'm sure we can all relate. Amen? Yanka, maybe not to the beard grooming part, but right? And, and so today... I feel the, the Lord wants to lead us to a place where we are always resting. We're always at peace. How does that sound? Right? I just need you to sign up to my program. If I can get 10 people, $500 investment fee, um, you pass it on to a friend, you'll be... No, no, no. <laughs> okay, the title of my message is Non-Stop Rest. Some of you are like, this is too good to be true. This is a gimmick. I'm out. No, no, no. Let me, let me preach it to you. Now, we're going to talk about rest. Now, when I say rest, I'm not talking about sleeping. Because who knows that you can feel uh, a little bit empty or drained or stressed and go to sleep and wake up and still feel the same way, right? Nothing has changed, right? Or you're, just, you're so stressed about stuff, you can't even get to sleep, right? And so we're talking about our rest for our souls, amen? But let me, let me set the scene a little bit more here. You see, God is good and He is kind, Amen? And it's his greatest desire to fill our lives and to place us in great purpose. Amen? And I know that what he calls you to, he graces and anoints you for. Amen? You know, Ian, you're grace to, 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 to be a father and to lead these boys to love Jesus as well, right? Like, you, you, you're grace, if you're a connect leader, to lead your connect group and see family upon family discipled and transformed whilst also working a full-time job. You know, you're, you're grace and anointed if you're a university student here to, to see your peers come to know Jesus whilst the Lord is equipping you for your future mission field, right? You're, you're, you're grace to make an impact in your neighborhood and to be a man or woman of prayer. You're, you're, you're a parent, you're a mom, you're a grace to manage a home and three children and minister to other parents doing it tough. You know, you're grace to work a big job that brings in finance for the kingdom and still be an active member in God's bride, in the church. Right? Now, if, if we're doing everything we're grace for, then should it wear us out? You know, this, this word grace, uh, in the Bible, it's charisma, where we get the word charisma, but the meaning is actually about a divine enabling and empowering from God, right? That means there's a divine power and ability and a capacity available to us to do His will, right? His enabling wouldn't be very divine if it can't sustain us or carry us through, amen, right? You know, personally, people often say, oh, Tam and you, and you, how do you do it? You're both in ministry. You, your kids come and do three services on a Sunday. Like, you, I can't even get to church on once, one, once in a week. You know, like, how do you do You, you manage, you got the school drivers, all the things. And, and um, I don't go, oh, yeah, you know, I'm awesome. No, I have to say, man, it's because we're graced for it. 
there is a grace that is upon us to do what God has called us to do. And, and, and I see it in the way God opens doors. I see it in the way that God puts um, our kids on people's hearts so they want to help us. Maybe it's a pity thing. They're like, oh, geez, these guys are really struggling. Let me help you here. I, I don't know. Like, you know. But even the way he downloads revelation to me for every time I need it, you know, like, it's not us at all. It's the grace. It's the grace of God. It's the divine enabling that makes it possible. So does that mean that I'm just kind of cruising through, like, life is easy, ministry, you know, my re, no sweat, you know, like, don't ever feel worn out? No, not, not exactly. But that's where we're going to unpack a truth today that's going to bless us big time in living full lives that bring glory to God. Because, because when I think about us feeling stressed and exhausted and worn out, well, if we're doing what our Heavenly Father has called us to, what kind of father would call you to a life that you can't handle? Like that would crush you, that would cause you to want to pull back and say, I don't, I don't want to do this, this is too much. Or, or you know, I just, I just need to put the brakes on for a minute because I, I need a, a, a break, you know. Because how, how does that bring him any glory? Or how does that, you know, testify of how good he is? It, it doesn't, right? And, and, and when we do that, we pull back or we, we pull the pin, whatever. Meanwhile, the very people that the Lord has called us to minister to, your kids or your family, your, your community, your, your connect group, they then miss out on what the Lord has for them and that he wants to bring to them through you, right? Or, or, or even worse, they look at you and, and your life and, man, they're always just stressed and, and not like, that looks terrible. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want what he's having, right? Like, I'm not, if that's what it means to follow Jesus, I'm okay, you know? Like, or, or you know, maybe they are a Christian and they're like, man, if that's what it means to really get into kingdom work, I, I'll, I'll pass. And so we actually turn people away from Jesus or from stepping into a greater kingdom work. Now, hear me out. Like, I'm all for you pausing to take a break if, if you've gotten yourself worn out. Like, you need to make a change and get yourself right again. Hear me out here. But... But I know today that the Lord wants to, to teach us and to lead us to live in such a way that this doesn't keep on happening to us or, or, or where, we, where we stop living on this ongoing place of stress all the time until we eventually just quit. Because quitting is not God's plan for us. Bailing on serving Jesus or on continue to put in work with your kids to know Jesus or leading people into worship, whatever it is you're called to do, we should only ever stop doing something that God has called us to do if He tells us we're done. If He says, yeah, I'm closing that door now because I'm opening this one. This is where I want you. Now, if we're stopping for any other reason, we're now doing our own thing and not the Lord's will. I'm not going to make any friends today here, am I? Someone's got to say it, you know. Okay, so, so, so what's the answer then? Well, we find it in the Word of God, as always, in Matthew chapter 11, in verse 28 to 30. It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We love that first verse, verse 28. Come to Jesus and he will give you rest. And we love the beginning of Psalm 23. You, you, you likely know it. Let me read that one too. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Jesus wants to give us rest. Amen. Rest is his, his promise for all of us. Right? He wants to give you rest. Praise the Lord. Right? And I'm going to give had the Lord an opportunity to minister his divine rest to you at the end of my message. And I'd love to lay hands on you and, and see him pour out that restoration over your soul, if that's what you need today. But it's important to understand that when we look at this passage of Scripture, that there's more to it. You see, you see it like this. Like, imagine um, if you can't swim and you just decide you're going to jump into a swimming pool. And straight away, you're going to start, you're drowning, right? And then Jesus is kind, so he throws you a life ring and pulls you out. You get out, okay, I'm out, I'm out. And then you just decide you're going to jump back in again. And you're drowning again, he saves you again. And I have to be careful. I, I, do you know a secret? I popped my button off in the first service <laughs> doing that. I'm safety pinned up right now, so I have to be careful. So I'm not going to jump in any more times. But... But we jump in and he rescues us and then we jump in again. Wouldn't it be better if we just learned how to swim? Yeah. And he wouldn't have to keep on saving us, right? And that's what he's saying in this passage. He's saying, I'm going to give you rest, but take my yoke upon you and learn from me. 
right? Learn from me. Because this is how we make decisions and do things that get us into a place of stress and getting worn out. And his kindness and his grace and mercy, he'll save us, right? Meaning he will give us rest, he'll restore us, he'll minister to us. But then he wants us to learn from him how to live, right? So we can live in this place where the yoke is easy and the burden is light. He's saying, I want you to live in such a way that the weight of your life is easy and not burdensome. Man, who wants that? How amazing does that sound, right? And so Jesus is not promising a life without challenges. He's not saying it's going to be easy peasy or cruisy. But if you're doing it in his way, in his rhythm of grace, then you can take it in your stride. You can make a kingdom impact and not be overwhelmed, worn out, or even stressed. Amen? I want that. Do you want that? So let's talk about this, this yoke that, 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 that Jesus is referring to. Um, Pastor Matt, why don't you come on? Is Pastor Faith around? Pastor Faith? No, all right, all right. I'm going to pick someone a little bit. Uh, Bibiana, come, 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 come. What? Yeah, oh my goodness. I look great. Come on up. All right, come on. Um, I, need a, I need a yoke. Okay, thank you. So this is my yoke. If you've ever been in farming before, they don't use these anymore. They have tractors and stuff. But this would uh, go on an oxen. All right, um, you yoke yourself over here. Bibiana, come on over. You're going to come that way. Yep, and that just kind of sits on your shoulders there. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, Matt, you're going to be Jesus. Don't let it mean something, all right? Like, don't let it mean something. I didn't say you were Jesus and, you know, this. All right, and Bibiana is going to be us, me and you, right? And so uh, I'll be the kind of the load, right, back here. Um, so these are the things that we're called to, the things we're carrying in life. There's a bit of, bit of weight there. Now, Bibiana, um, Jesus is just going to walk, and you just walk with Jesus, okay? All right, go for it, Jesus. Keep walking with Jesus, Bibiana. All right. All right, cool. Hold it there. Now, I'm putting a bit of weight on that. It was okay, Jesus? Yeah. Bill, how was that you? You just cruising? It was easy? Yeah. All right, cool. Bring it back. Bring it back. Good job. Good yoking. <laughs> All right. We're going to go again, but this time, Bibiana, I want you to try and go back to your seat, okay? All right, go. Go to your seat, Bibiana. Go sit down. <laughs> you okay? This looks difficult. All right, pause it there. That was, was that a bit hard work? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. This time, Bibiana... We're going to just go straight ahead into the purposes of God, but I want you to go fast. All right, go. Go, Bibiana, go. Go. All right, all right, okay, hold it. Come back now, come back. Now, it's been a lot. It's a bit of work, right? So now what I want you to do is I just want you to walk for a little bit and then just stop. Just call it, okay? All right, let's go. Is that? Stop, Bibiana, stop. All right, all right, hold it there. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, let's take that off. Bibiana, you did great. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it was easy when she just walked alongside with Jesus, right? When did it become hard? When she tried to go her own way. She was in the, but she tried to do it her own way. She tried to go faster. She tried to stop. She tried, no, I'm taking it this way, right? And that's when it becomes very hard, right? Living in a place of rest is about learning how to walk with him, yeah. how to go his way, and then it's easy and it's light, right? And you look back and you see, wow, we've gone so far, like we've done some good work for the kingdom. Praise God. My kids are loving Jesus. I'm not, I'm not a bitter, worn out sourpuss, all right? <laughs> you see, we are yoked to him for a kingdom purpose, right? It's about, uh, it's, it's to represent Christ in our everyday worlds. It's for productivity and it's for impact, right? And so it's about working with him. You see, rest is not about stopping. It's about remaining. You see, it's about depending on him in every moment of our lives, right? It's about committing every challenge to him and trusting in him with everything that's going on in our lives, every relationship thing, every task at work, every challenge at home, every financial decision. It's about remaining in him. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Whatever I am now, it's all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. So he's saying we've, we've kicked some goals. We've seen some impact here. And he says, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. You see, we're called to put in work, 
right? But we're to do it with him and to allow his grace to work through us, to allow him to carry it so it's easy and light. There is a grace available to us to get work done. You know, John 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Have you ever seen a, a tree produce fruit, like an apple tree or a mango? You know, it doesn't kind of get itself ready and gets the branch out and it goes, mm-hmm. ah, there's an apple, let's do another one. Mm-hmm. There's an a- no, no, right? It's not, it's not trying to force some, some fruit out, right? It remains planted and healthy and fruit is the result. Amen? Can you see the connection here? Right? The Lord is calling us to stop striving and start remaining. Right? Just stop trying to figure it all out ourselves and start depending on the Lord of the entire universe, the source of all wisdom. Amen? The one who has a divine grace and capacity available to us and wants us to walk in a nonstop rest. So why, why don't we do this? You know, why is this difficult? Our issue is independence. When, when I try to go my way, when I try to speed up God's way, when I think I know better, when I don't stand on his promises, I push against the easy yoke, right? I start trying to take it my own way and do my own thing, right? And, 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 and I make things hard. I bring on the stress, right? I bring on the worry, the sleepless nights, the getting frustrated about the kids, the feeling overwhelmed about everything I need to sort out in ministry or at work or whatever. All the while, Jesus is like, I'm here, Would you yoke yourself to me? Let me show you what to do. I'll lead you in this place of nonstop rest. So so why do we do it? Why do we try to do it in our own strength or without God? Why do we choose this this independence? Maybe is is it because we don't actually believe God completely accepts us and loves us just as we are. And so if we can do something for God, if I can achieve something for God, then he'll value me a bit more. I'll feel a bit more valuable. Is it because we don't deep, like genuinely really trust God to take care of us and our own, to make a way or to lead us into freedom so we try to do it ourselves, all right? Or is it because your parents didn't quite look after you well so you had to do things yourself, you had to protect your heart and so now you treat God the same way? Could it be that our independence comes from us having an orphan spirit. Not really understanding that he is our father, a good, good and perfect father and is completely for us and wants to give us rest, wants to grace us, wants to to do this journey with us and carry the burdens for us. We're going to go deeper today. We're going to let the Holy Spirit peel back some layers in our hearts and really see what's going on so that he can heal us and make us free. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, you must be yoking. You must be yoking. You must be yoking. It's not you must be yoked. Sometimes we think it's a one-off thing. But yoking is an everyday, ongoing, continuous position to say, okay, Jesus, I'm doing this with you. I'm remaining in you. We must die to our independence. We got to lay it on this altar and kill it. You know, it sounds drastic, but it's the reason we're wearing ourselves out. Yeah. You know, it's what actually makes following Jesus unlike any other religion. is to say, I, I can't do this on my own. I can't make myself holy. I can't make my way to God. I can't make an impact for him by myself. I need him and I want to rely on him for every part of my life. And it goes against our fleshly nature. Fleshly nature is to take things, hold it, make something of ourselves, fix the problem you got in, etc., etc. Can I take this a bit deeper with you? What's independence? It's me saying, you know, I'll I'll fix it, I'll figure this out. You know, it's up to me to sort it. I need to be strong. I got myself into this, so I'll get myself out of this. What's pride? Is pride not saying, I do it my way? I know better. I've got this. I'm the answer, I'm right, I'm capable, right? And so the root of independence is pride. Yikes. Because the Bible says in James chapter 4 that the Lord opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You see, grace and pride are eternal enemies. 
right? Where our pride blocks out the grace. It creates a wall from the grace, the divine enabling that's available to us. It, it, it can't move in us to complete his will. So it means he cannot empower us. He can't give us that dose of patience that we need, that solution for that thing where we're stuck if we're in a posture of pride. Now, pride is sneaky. Right? It's this little thing that kind of creeps in. Sometimes we see it as this big, dirty Christian word, but it's actually really sneaky how it can kind of come and creep into our lives so easily. One example I thought of for me is how uh, having experience can build pride in us. When we're called to do something for God, I remember the first time I preached, I was like, oh, Jesus, you better help me. You better do something. I, I got nothing to bring here. I don't know what I'm doing. But now, I- I've done this quite a few times now. I've got plenty of experience. I've you know, done it in different cultures and things. You know, I-, I can start to take the reins back and say, okay, I know how to do this now. And that's where the pride is come in. However we find ourselves in an attitude of pride, man, the result is we start tapping into our own strength, right? Our own wisdom, our own capacity, all of which are a limited resource, right? And then we wonder why we're struggling, why we're getting snappy at people, why we're feeling stressed, overwhelmed. We start getting sick, you know, and it's like the joy of the Lord is just leaking out of us, not in a good way, right? When all along the Lord is saying, my yoke is easy, My burden is light. Remain in me and you'll bear much fruit. I've got an abounding grace for you who will depend on me. Would you step in to my non-stop rest? You know, if we recognize a need for him every day, we say, I want to be yoked to you, Jesus, in every part of my life. And we decide to genuinely humble ourselves. We'll live in a non-stop rest. We will not burn out. We will not be overwhelmed. We'll bear fruit. But will we learn from him? Will we learn his way? Will we yoke ourselves to him? Just quickly, a few practicals. How do we stay in this place? How do we yoke ourselves to him? The first one is to just turn to his word every day. The Bible, right? It says the word became flesh, right? That the Bible and Jesus, that, that's what we need, right? And, and the remaining looks like turning to your word every day. Jesus' teachings are in here. We see the way he lived in here, right? Every day he retreats to a quiet place with the Father. If the Savior of the world needed to be with the Father every day, how much more so do we? How much more so? But we don't because we actually think subconsciously, I've got this covered. I've done this before. I'll handle it. Ah, that's my pride, right? We've got to put it at his feet and yoke ourselves again to him. Now, some of you, you actually have a great devotional life, but maybe the next step for you is actually bringing everything to God in prayer. It's actually giving it to Him, committing it to Him. Each thing in your life, God, I need you to lead me as the head of my home, right? God, I want your grace over my work today. You know, God, what's the strategy for this project? You know, what matters to you right now? What do you want me to do as a parent today? You know, how can I represent you when I'm at school today? Am am I looking at this person through your eyes right now? We need to have yielded prayer conversations with God. We say, God, this is what's going on. I know I'm graceful. I'm coming under that. I step in, God, what do you want to do? What's in your heart? I give this to you. This is your thing, not mine. And from there, we have to learn to, to check ourselves. Turn to someone and say, check yourself. We have to learn to actually become aware when we start to feel stressed or, or overwhelmed, to recognize, ooh, I've come out of that rhythm of grace with Jesus, right? I've come out of really walking alongside in the yoke. Maybe I'm trying to make something happen here. And I've got to come back under. I've got to humble myself again. Lord, sorry, I'm trying to deal with this person or this problem. Normally the person is the problem. Am I right or am I right? Um, and, and, I'm, and Lord, I'm doing it my way. I'm doing it in my strength. And so, Lord, you know best. Teach me how to love or teach me how to forgive. Whatever the situation calls, I choose to humble myself before you right now. And I'm going to stay yoked to you. I'm going to lean into that grace. So we got to check ourselves when we're stepping out of that. And the last thing I believe is, is we actually just need to commit to the wholeness journey. None of us are like Jesus yet. None of us, uh, we're, we're all on this journey of going from glory to glory. And, and I, I shared a few examples of why do we choose this independence? You know, if you're not trusting him or if you're doing it by yourself because you just have always had to since you were young or, or maybe it's because you really don't believe that God accepts and loves you as you are or that he'll actually take care of you. These are all an invitation to go deeper with the Lord. 
and to allow his love, his truth, his presence to transform you and to break that orphan spirit and actually draw you deep into a place where you trust him as father. You trust him. You trust him to be yoked with you and to know, oh, you've got this. You've got my life. You've got my family. You've got what you've called me to. Worship team, you guys can come join me. Imagine if we all applied this truth today. <laughs> We'd be nicer to be around. <laughs> But fathers, you know, men of the house, right? can, can you see the greater kingdom impact that we'd have in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities? If we just daily laid down our independence and our pride and we were models of what it means to yoke ourselves to Jesus every day and to walk in humility. What an example we'd be to our kids. To, we'd lead our families with grace and, and with God's heart, right? And, and the overflow of that into our spaces of influence would just be something so beautiful to behold. And this is not just for the fathers or the men of the house. This is for everyone. That as we yoke ourselves to him, we can walk in a nonstop rest and do kingdom work. Kingdom work that brings him glory. Glory.